So, um, I come to you today actually with two priorities. The first priority is to discuss uh, the content of my talk. It's the first reality I want to challenge. The second actually involves uh, the current paradigm of the business casual attire, and uh, I hope you can bear with me as I challenge that reality as well. Um, let's see here. Oh, oh. Okay, uh, this is pretty blurry, but this is me. I'm Christian Elliott, and I'm addicted to Facebook, and Twitter, and also Wikipedia. Um, and in fact, if you look on that screen, I'll probably be tweeting during the show. <laughs> um, but I don't think that I'm that unusual in this. Uh, I think there's a lot of us out there who love these interactive platforms as much as I do. But over the last year, my experiences teaching media to students in the Philippines or watching the development of social movements growing over the last year, every Facebook comment and every Tumblr blog makes me feel like a moral criminal. Because last spring, 2011, when I was likely procrastinating on Facebook or watching videos of cats on YouTube, um, people my age in Tunisia and Egypt and Libya we're using these same platforms to overthrow authoritarian leaders in the Arab Spring. So, the issue here is, is grand. Um, if you look at the statistics of uh, what was going on in Egypt in January of 2011, the internet penetration in population was only 30%. And of that 30%, 32% of that internet use was at home. But here, you come back to the West, and 8 out of 10 people have access to internet use. And if you look at uh, the age group of people that are 18 to 29 years of age, that rate goes up to 95%. And you ask yourself, with public education systems that emphasize media and computer literacy, and a general fluency of internet resources, What's going on? I mean, we have the ability to answer any question with uh, Google and Wikipedia. We have, oh, these are the rates, my bad. <laughs> um, we have Facebook and Twitter connecting every social corner of the planet. We have uh, the lion's share of the world's greatest literature available for free downloads at Amazon.com. Yale and MIT offer entire courses of lectures uploaded. Um, and companies like Indiegogo and Kickstarter.com offer opportunities to finance projects, initiatives, and businesses without bank loans. So where is our revolution? Is our government so free from corruption? Is our environment so pristine that we are afforded the luxury of complacency? Um, the thing is, is that we become numb to our informational power. Uh, we've become oversaturated. Tools that were meant for us to use are now using us. The average Canadian or American watches approximately four hours of television a day, which is 28 hours television a week, which is close to two months of television a year, which in a lifespan of 65 years comes to close to nine years of nonstop television. The average Canadian, and this is interesting, we are actually the friendliest Facebook users on the planet, <laughs> on average, um, spends about 20 minutes a day on Facebook. And, you know, in America, 72% of internet users have Facebooks. Half of that, um, half of those people log in every single day. And it accounts for over 200 billion minutes on Facebook every single month. Um, so, <laughs> it's kind of an issue. Um, so, I'd like to draw your attention to this quote by the Dalai Lama. Um, who, in the context of Western happiness and technology, he says, there is a link between our disproportionate emphasis on external progress and the unhappiness, anxiety, and um, lack of contentment in modern society. We are plugging in, but we're becoming disconnected from community relationships. Community relationships that have mutualism and compassion and push us towards social justice. It's being replaced by our dependency on social media and 
our increasing existence in synthetic social space. But the greatest irony is that with all this extra connection, with all this extra exposure, we're not getting any closer as human beings. And it doesn't seem like we're getting any happier as well. I mean, these platforms are largely superficial. Um, and you can see it manifest in uh, sort of how people characterize our youth generation. They say we have short attention spans. They say we're apathetic. They say we are defined by escapism. And that frightens me, and I hope it frightens you. Um, yeah. So, does it have to be this way? No. These platforms are completely capable of allowing us to come together for social causes that are compassionate and help us progress um, our society. In January of 2010, uh, the world watched as Haiti experienced a cataclysmic earthquake that killed hundreds of thousands of people. And for myself and a group of my friends, we were exposed to the mass stories of the suffering and the people that were going through this. And we reached this threshold where we realized how powerful media was and how we could actually get involved with this. We can tell these stories. We can do this. Um, so a month later, we formed an organization called Developing Pictures Media. We fly down to Haiti and we film pro bono promotional pieces for organizations working on the ground. And so, think about this, 10, 15, 20 years ago, this wouldn't have been possible for a shamble of undergraduate students to come together, form an organization, and go to a foreign country. But it was the context of our modern world. You know, we had professional grade uh, camera equipment that was affordable to the average consumer. We had instantaneous communication with organizations on the ground in Haiti. And we had websites that we could access and get information from that allowed us to make an impromptu trip to a devastated foreign country that we had never been to before. Um, and of course, we use social media to promote our cause. But it's, we're, we're not really alone in this. There, it's, it's starting to happen more and more. And that's what I really think people should be realizing. You watch the news and you hear about Bill McKibben and 350.org and how we've how they've been able to mobilize these activists to postpone the Keystone XL pipeline and the Occupy Wall Street movement where people are coming together and it is a testament to the power of social media where they are organizing and coming together and creating new tactics to face off against some of the most powerful institutional players in the world. So I actually went to Occupy Wall Street in October and to do some filming, and the consensus there was that people were using social media to come together for these causes, and when they did, and when they had shared compassionate causes that was enabled by these platforms, they had found human connection like they never had before. Um, and when I was there, I actually heard uh, one of my favorite scholars, Jeffrey Sachs, of Columbia University speak, um, and so I have an audio um, sample of what he was talking about in relation to this. So, Because you're all going to tweet them and retweet them and retweet them and retweet them. And they're going to be your friends on Facebook and they're going to be millions of people supporting this. And you're a lot more clever than those guys. They don't even know how to use the internet. So <laughs> go for it. Use the social marketing tools. Break the back of money in the campaigns. That's the trick. So what, it was a little clipped off, but what he was talking about was the fact that everyone, if working together using social media, has the power of destroying corruption in Washington, D.C., and the relationships between the government and these massive banks. Um, but the point here is, is that these barriers to entry, these barriers um, of our perception about these everyday platforms, are outdated. You know, we have the power to do what we want. We have the potential to do what we want. There shouldn't be anything to stop us. Um, so today, I challenge you. I challenge you to go on Facebook and like a social cause. I challenge you to go on Twitter and retweet something one of your favorite politicians said. 
I challenge you to join an organization in your community online, and I challenge you to start something because you can. Because a revolution is just a mouse click away. Thank you. <laughs>